Here we go. Look at this. Second Corinthians chapter three. Second Corinthians chapter three. Talking about the reflection and the image of Jesus. For the Lord is the spirit. And wherever the spirit of the Lord is, say it out with me. There is. Most people know that, that verse right there. But most people don't continue to read what's after that verse. It's very important. We all want freedom. Where's all my f- people that are in the freedom group right now? Come on, make some noise in the house. It says, so all of us. Somebody shout, all of us. That means everyone in this room, everybody listening, every campus. All of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the Spirit, check it out right here, it makes us more and more like Jesus. How many know every single day we're supposed to be more and more like Jesus? You experience Jesus on Sunday. We do everything we can to give you our best, but it's your job to take what we give you on Sunday and become more and more Monday through Saturday. Are you with me? So our goal is to become, if I walk up, in other words, if you meet me one year from now and you don't see me more and more like Jesus, then I've missed it. How many want to be better one year from now? Come on, anybody in the house, you want to be stronger. More and more like him as we are changed, this is beautiful, into his glorious image. It's a reflection of the Lord. Look at Proverbs 27, verse 19, our theme verse for reflections. It says this, as a face is reflected in water, so the heart reflects the real person. How many know you can try to hide you as much as you want, but people see it, your family sees it, and especially God sees it. (laughs) It's amazing to me how many people trying to hide from God, like you can't hide from he way up there he's got the best point of view but the reflection of the heart shows the real person when I think of reflection I think about I believe it says in Colossians it talks about we're supposed to be a representative of Christ everywhere that we go we're supposed to rep Christ being representative of him everywhere I go I'm supposed to carry the image of Jesus My children, I'm blessed with four kids. Like, I'm probably right now, I'm the best example of what, how to walk with Jesus that they're going to see in their life, right? Everywhere that I go to, you're supposed to represent and reflect the Lord. Even when you walk into a restaurant and you got a bad waiter, you still love them. Come on, somebody. I know I'm talking. I'm helping somebody right now. And you still tip them. Don't go, don't go in getting all cheap on blessing a waiter, and you still, and, but you don't want to cheap God, right? Don't be a cheap in your generosity. And like, we always working on being a representative, right? Like, we're, we're constantly making it happen. And uh, anybody ever been, been this happening one time, but you driving, driving around, you trying to find that perfect parking spot? Anybody know what I'm talking about? And all of a sudden, you just pull around, and it feels like the heavens part, and you're like, huh? This is that right? And I drive a big F 250, and I'm about to roll in to this parking spot, and this little, this little, this little Kia, this little mosquito, just like, just, just zip, just, just takes my parking spot, and before I knew it, I had my truck in park, and I was knocking on their window. Oh yeah, y'all pray for me, I got a lot of growing to do, okay? Like, and I'm literally at their window, my wife is yelling, pastor! I was like, I ain't got no sticker on my truck, come on somebody, right? Like, I know it's supposed to be a representative. I can preach to you today, but on Monday, I will cut you off on the highway if you're driving stupid. Come on, right? That's why I ain't got a Hope City sticker. I'm just telling you. Right? It's like, but I, I'm working. I, I, I got to reflect the image of the Y'all just waving me. I know I'm not alone in here. Come on, y'all don't lie in church. I know I'm talking to somebody. I coach my son in football. And uh, I have an honor to do that. I love coaching. It was my passion. I thought it was going to be my entire career before God called me into ministry and, you know, I played sports and loved college, uh, playing, uh, coaching football. And, and, uh, there was this moment though that I was coaching and, uh, the other team was taking cheap shots at, at my kids. Uh, I mean, literally I sent video evidence in, come on somebody like, I mean, like I, I ain't going to play games. And I literally, like, I told the referee, it's like, you better watch this. Like, come on. And then something just clicked, and all of a sudden, I found myself. Now, I, I, I know I'm supposed to represent Jesus, all right? Y'all just bear with me. 
I found myself in the 50-yard line in the middle of the field yelling at the referee. I thought I'd touch your butt. If you ain't going to do nothing, I'm going to say something. Then after the game, I had one of the other coaches walk up to me and go, hey, Pastor Brandon, I go to Hope City. So, yeah. Yeah, I said, bro, you didn't see Pastor Brandon. You saw dad. Come on, somebody, right? It's, like, it's, like, it's real tough. Come on, how many still working a little bit? Come on, anybody still under construction? Like, there's moments you want to be like, Jesus, stay right here for five minutes. I'll be right back. I can handle this dude with my pinky in like five seconds acting stupid. <laughs> Back to Jesus. Come on. I, 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 I. Here's my point, though. How many know everywhere we go, we're supposed to reflect the image of Christ? Am I right? It's not about being perfect, but it's about being committed. And everywhere we go, a reflection is like a mirror. It makes you look at yourself. Like the, like the great theologian once said, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. And I'm asking them to change his ways. And if you want to make the world a better place, you better take a look at yourself and make a change. See, you know. <laughs> Professor MJ. I mean, you know, like, you know, you got, you got to look at yourself. But, but please hear me. Who we are is just as vital as what we do. You got to focus on you. You got you to focus on self. I know a lot of people that the world would define as success, and they are lost. Yeah. And I know I do prison ministry, and, and we're thankful we do a lot of prison ministry here at Hope City. I can't tell you how many prisoners I've met that consider the world they've lost everything, but they are more found than most people I see outside the prison walls. You got to take a look at yourself. It's a reflection. Who you are, people will see. So what is the reflection of God? It's his word. John 1.1 1, 1 says what? In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word is, was God. So if you want to know, my, my goal today is this, just so you all know. I'm treating today like a good old cup of glass uh, sweet tea. Come on. Anybody like some good sweet tea? You know that man like that Popeye sweet tea? Come on, somebody. It's like a little, it's like syrup. I don't know what they put in there, right? But like, it's not that you don't know the ingredients, but sweet tea don't happen until you stir it up a little bit, right? And so my job today, I felt from the Holy Spirit, is not to tell you something that you don't already know, but my job is to coach you up and to stir you up a little bit, to get you fired up, to believe in you the way that God sees you. Come on, are you with me? This is the heart that you can live life Sunday to Sunday. So what is the reflection of God? It's known what his word says. The reflection of God's word. The Bible talks about us to love God and love people. Number one, if you're taking notes, is this. Here's how you reflect the Lord in your life. And I know you've heard it before, but I'm going to add something new. It's your love and your passion for God. Your love and your passion for God. I know a lot of people, everyone in this room, and I know a lot of people who have a reverent love for God, but you can say you love God and not see your passion. And I tell you right now, the people that I see that are most successful in my, my life, completely turned around, is that I didn't just walk around saying I love God, but you saw the passion of God on the inside of me and everything that I do. That's why I start off this message with the Redeemer of the Lord say, so I know y'all know how to shout. My question is, is like, where's that passion in your every other day life? Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's got to be a love and a passion for the Lord. That's why it says in Matthew 22, 37, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. There, there's, there's a passion behind that. Jesus could easily say, uh, with your heart, with your soul, and with your mind. But he didn't. What did he say? He said, with all your heart. There needs to be a love and a passion for God if you want to begin to see a change in your life. Come on, are y'all with me? Can I get an amen? Come on, all right, you, you follow me? I remember in my life, there was, uh, I was driven <laughs> doing everything I could to try to be normal. I was trying to be normal, so I was just trying to fit in. 
It's like, I just, I just want to fit in. I remember even as a teenager and even certain moments in college and just growing up, like, I just, I just want to fit in. I just, I just want to, want to be normal. And, and uh, I'll never forget, this just happened not too long ago, uh, a few, couple weeks ago with my son. But uh, I know we just got out of 21 days of uh, prayer and fasting. Come on, how many love 21 days of prayer and fasting, right? God moved, moved in an incredible way. And how many know we keep praying, but how many are glad you're done with fasting? Come on, somebody, let's just get rid. And so, uh, so my wife had uh, an idea that as a family that, that we would all fast and be gluten-free. And my, my wife, uh, she has to live her life gluten-free and dairy-free. It's, it's a very sad life. And... Uh, <laughs> And I mean, it's it's like I, I feel so bad for her because I like I mean, she wants bread. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, it's changed our date life. I feel all we can eat at is at salada. Like she she gets salad, and I say, can I get a bowl of croutons and some ranch? I'm just like getting my carbs on. But <laughs> it's true. We did gluten free for 21 days. It, it was very sad, but the Lord showed up. Come on, somebody, how I many know? He'll show up for you. But I'll never forget my son, though, in the middle of the fast. I don't know if you remember this, baby. but in the middle of the fast, my son came up. We caught him three days in a row. He was throwing away his lunch. And so he was sneaking to the lunch line. And so, so we caught him. Come on. Has anybody been there? Come on. Where you at? How many, how many were that kid? Let's go. I was that kid. He asked like he's hiding something. I'm like, bro, I invented that. Come on. I was like... Let me tell you, something else, and this is a true story. When it comes summertime, all of a sudden you get a bill from the school for over three hundred dollars because your son went to the went to the lunch line and didn't tell us anything. Come on, all right? But uh, but anyways, but he came home one day and he just started crying because we caught him throwing away his lunch. He's like, Dad. It's like, Dad. He said, he said, I got the healthiest lunch in the whole school. Come on, how many moms believe in healthy lunches? Just wave at it. Come on, it's all right. Like that applesauce costs $17 a piece, but you're going to put it in there, right? That organic applesauce. But my he just said, Dad, I just want to be normal. I just want a normal lunch. <laughs> and can I tell you, though, that I, ha I have learned, though, in parenting and in leadership and even in my life, I'm constantly having conversations with my kids, and this is also within your workplace. I had to find myself playing sports, how I'm going to handle myself in the locker room, how am I going to handle myself coaching, how are you going to handle yourself when in your workplace and wherever God has called you to be. Every room you step into, maybe you've thought, I just want to fit in. I, I just want to be normal. And can I tell you, I wanted to be normal so bad. I end up being exactly what I wanted, and that was normal and hurting like everybody else. Because normal is depression. Normal is anxiety. Normal is stressed out. Normal is brokenness. Normal is broken marriages and relationships. That's why you do not want to miss the relationship series starting next week. How many thankful for that? You want thriving marriages and you want thriving families. And I realized real quick, normal is not what I want to be. Maybe I've called, maybe God has called my life to be different. The Bible says a friend to the world is an enemy to God. So I want to be a friend with the Lord. And I'm called to be different. So in that moment, I decided to be different. And I gave my life to Jesus. And I realized my love for God wasn't enough. But I had to have a love for God. Come on, are you with me? And I had to have a passion for God. In other words, Sunday was not a gig for me. I couldn't just treat Sunday as a gig and check in and check out. But I realized for the life of Brandon Barber, I don't want to just fit in. But I want to stand out. And I want to live life Sunday to Sunday full of Jesus and full of the Holy Spirit. That's my heartbeat. And can I tell you, the moment that I decided to be different and go all in with Jesus, everything changed in my life. God blessed my finances because I started to be a faithful tither. God blessed my health. God bless my sports. God bless. It was in that year I met my amazing wife, and we're about to celebrate 20 years of marriage. Come on, somebody. Let me tell you right now. Hear me, whether you're in the room, no matter if you're young or you're older and wiser. We're going to say wiser. Come on, am I right? If, you're, if you got gray, you remember back in the day. Come on, right? Like wherever you fit, in between. Can I tell you right now? Stop trying to fit in. You ain't got a cuss to fit in to get fat. Like, 
you, you got to watch, watch your mouth, watch your language, watch your talk, watch your decisions. You sitting in this room right now, not to just say I love God, but I'm gonna, I'm not gonna show you my best on Sunday, but I'm gonna be different Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday from Sunday to Sunday. You're gonna see, oh come on, Hope City, where you at? You're gonna see a love for God and a passion for God like never before. It's got to be something different on the inside of it. I told you I came to stir you up a little bit. I hope you're all right with that. Some of y'all first time like, what is wrong with this white boy? I say, man, but I can tell you why. Because I lived a long life just saying I love God. But the moment I decided I'm not ashamed to throw my hands up and show my passion for God, not ashamed to serve God, when you combine love and your passion for God, it changes everything. It changes it all. And I want to show you in Scripture, God gives us a game plan for this. There's two Scriptures. You can look at it on the screen. And the other one I told you to turn to in Leviticus 6. Romans 12, 11 says this. Never let the fire, check this out, take a screenshot of it if you need to. Never let the fire in your heart go out. But keep it alive and serve the Lord. Can you hold that just for a second? Yeah, yeah. Keep, it alive. Keep it alive is what we fight for. Keep it alive in your marriage. Keep it alive in your family. Keep it alive in your workplace. No matter what room you walk into, are you going to fit in or are you going to stand out? If you lose friends, but you gain Jesus, you still gain everything. How do you keep it alive? That's the question today. How do you reflect the Lord and keep the fire in your heart? Burning. Well, God gave Moses a game plan for that, for you and your family. It's in Leviticus chapter 6. It says, that, I'm going to read it out of the message translation because I think it says it the best. Leviticus 6, verse 8 through 13. Notice the very first part. It says, God spoke to Moses. This ain't a parable. This ain't just an illustration. This is a directive from the Lord. And how many know if we serve a God who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, if God spoke it then, how many know it's available for us today? Come on, am I right? So notice this, but God said, command Aaron and his sons. In other words, listen to me. This is not just for you, but this is for your family. For me and my house, we will serve, we will serve the Lord. God gives you a game plan, and here it is. It says, command Aaron and his sons. Tell them. These are the instructions for the whole burnt offering, which is the altar of the Lord. Let me, let me just break it down to you in a little bit of context. Okay, when they wanted to meet with the Lord, they went to the altar of God, the Ark of the Covenant. They went to the altar. They went to the... And now, when we meet with God, you can meet... Because of Jesus, you can meet with him every day, one-on-one. -on -one. No matter where you are, his presence will show up. But the reason why we have Sunday church is for you to gather together, to fill this, to get filled up with the fire of God. Are you following me? So this, this is what Moses was speaking to, saying, hey, God was telling Moses, hey, I don't think Aaron and them get it. Like, it's not just a Sunday thing. Like, like how do you keep this going every single day in your life? Are you following me? Can I get a yeah? All right. Yeah. It goes on to say, leave the whole burnt offering at the altar through the night until the morning. But notice it says, the fire kept burning. Skip down to the next verse. It says, this is very important. I'll get to it. But remove the ashes. Remove what remains from the whole burnt offering and place it beside the altar. Then change clothes and carry the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. Meanwhile, notice how many times God says this, keep the fire burning. And notice this word's right here because it says it twice. It must not go out. Come on, please hear the passion of God for that in your family. Please hear the passion of God when he reaches. this. He says, then he tells you, all right, if you don't want it to go out, this is what you do. Replenish the wood for the fire every morning. Arrange the whole burnt offering on it and burn the fat and the peace offering on top of all of it. Here it goes. And keep the fire burning. Here it is again, continuously. And God says it twice in the same sentence. It must not go out. Keep it alive. Keep it burning. You must not let the fire in your heart for God, the passion, go out. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, anybody like making a good fire? Come on, anybody in the house? 
Like for me, I felt this cool weather and I'm like, it's like some of y'all are already wearing sweaters. It ain't sweater weather yet. All right, but it's like, but you, but you got sweater weather. Anyways, yeah, this, this, so anyway, okay, here we go. That's what we do in Houston. It drops 80 and everybody all of a sudden dressed like you in Antarctica or something. Like, uh, it's real talk. I do the same thing. That's why I got a towel shirt. It feels good. Okay, here we go. But there's a difference though. I love this. Man, cold weather, put me by a fire. And I'll hang out. I'll, just give me a stick and I'll just poke the fire. Like I'm a happy man. I mean, we men, we easy. Am I right? Come on. Like it's super easy. And, uh, but anyways, uh, there's a difference between a beginner fire starter and a seasoned fire starter. Hey, this, <laughs> this is a true story. I'll never forget, I was dating my wife. We've been on one date. We're about to go on a second date. And I'm thinking, man, we're going to sit by the fire. And uh, I met her up in Arkansas. She's from Arkansas. And, and the weather was cool. And so I did something that every beginner does. And, this, and just so you all know, I'm going to preface, like, I know what's wrong. Let me just say that. So I poured gasoline over the fire. I, I know now. I poured gasoline, it's <laughs> true story, poured gas, and I lit that thing, whoo, it burned my left eyebrow completely off. <laughs> and then, and then, I was thinking, remember the story <laughs> that I burned both of them off. My wife reminded me last night, no, babe, you burned one off. That night, I knew I had a date the next day. I tried to trim the other eyebrow to make, and I accidentally cut it all off. So our second date, homie had two, no eyebrows. <laughs> and she still married me. Come on, see that, man, let's go. <laughs> That's a true story. That's what a beginner fire maker does. Like, yo, let's get as much wood. Let's go, big fire. Woo! Like, ah! But a seasoned fire maker knows that if you start it big, it'll actually burn faster and quicker. But a seasoned fire maker knows you just add a little bit every hour. You just got to start small. In the Bible, it talks about little by little. How many know you don't have to come in Sunday and try to get all your problems fixed? And can I tell you, this is exactly how most people treat Sunday mornings, and I've been there. We walk in on a Sunday, and all hell is breaking loose in your life. You're like, God, I need you this, 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 this. And then you get mad at God because he doesn't answer everything on a Sunday. All your problems ain't going to get fixed on a Sunday. Y'all still love me? Come on, all right? You're all right. I'm not saying that God can't do miracles. We have a saying around here at Hope City that miracles are normal. How I many know oh, God can move on a Sunday morning? Am I right? God does move, but you can't walk into Sunday and all of a sudden now you've been out of church for six months and you rush in on a Sunday and be like, God, I need you. And you got this big pile of all these problems. Can I tell you? It's not about a Sunday and everything gets fixed, but it's about what are you taking from Sunday and applying it a little bit on Monday? And a little bit on Tuesday. And then from Sunday to Sunday, you begin to see God move on your life a little bit by a little bit every single day. And God was trying to teach him, and this is a game plan for us to, to learn from. There's three things that he gives us with inside that game plan. Number one is this, at the very top, notice this. God said, remove what remains. Remove the ashes. You can't keep the fire going if you don't remove the ash. If you let the ash pile up, it eventually will take the fire out. There's something, I know every single one of us, what is that thing and who is that person that you know needs to go that is keeping the fire from staying alive in your life? And that's hard to do. I'm not saying you can't still love them, but there might be somebody that's stuck on stupid and they need to go. Because every room you walk into, they pulling you to what you used to be instead of pushing you to where God has called you to be, right? I need people in my life that are passionate for God the way I'm passionate for God. I don't need friends in my life that are pulling me away from God. I need friends in my life that are putting me in check saying, hey, last week I saw you jumping up and down in worship, and this week your hands are in your pockets. Where's the passion, Brandon? I saw you used to read a little bit more. Come on. How many want some friends in your life that are pushing you to where God has called you to be? But you got to get rid. you got to get rid of what remains. There's brokenness. There's hurt. I was talking with Pastor Daniel yesterday. We're talking about the message and just talking through a couple of uh, thoughts and illustrations and thought he said something so amazing is, have you, ever, have you ever found yourself looking in the water and seeing the reflection of the water? 
Anybody down? Come on. Nobody? Come on. Where are you at? Just let me go. Mirror, group participation. Here we go. Anybody, everybody looked in a pond. You see your face. Okay. All right. We're on the same page. Just making sure. Then we'll make sure I lose you. But how many know you see, your, you see the reflection of your face when the water is still? But all it takes is just a little dab of the finger or a rock, and then all of a sudden there's disturbance in the water. And you lose your identity. All of a sudden, it may, all it takes is maybe one text message, one email, one thought, one moment. And all of a sudden, you begin questioning your identity because you've stopped seeing you the way that God sees you. You start looking at your brokenness and your mistakes. The Bible says it's, it's like a mirror. In other words, this is the way that God says, hey, you're, you're, you're made perfect. This is how God wants you to see. You, you, if God didn't need you, he wouldn't have created you. You were born in original, so don't die a copy. Be exactly who God has called you to be. There ain't nothing wrong with you. This is the way God wants to see, see you. But this is how you see yourself. You see yourself broken. You can't even see the fullness of the God on the inside of you. All you see is pain and brokenness and hurt and family trauma and God didn't answer this prayer so you're mad at him or your marriage is broken. All of a sudden, you still love God, but you've lost your passion for God. And you're here you are, you're focused on this, but God is sitting right here saying, just look up. I need you to finally see you the way that I see you again. There's something different here. The Bible, the Bible says to love God and to love people. You can't even, that's why we get out and we do missions. That's why we teach the principle of tithing and generosity. Because when you serve and you give, it helps us go and to reach people, right? This is why we got missions projects. This is why we go to prisons. That's why our team just got back from Honduras and put a water well in the middle of a community that needed to find out about Jesus. This is why we go from neighborhoods to nations. Can I tell you right? This is why we do a marriage series, talk about relationships and family and dating. But here's the problem. You can't even love somebody because you don't even know how to love yourself. Because all you see is brokenness and pain. You got to get rid of the remains, the ashes. Stop seeing what is broken and start seeing purpose. God loves you, but he's ready to see that passion back again. And I'm telling you right now, there's an anointing, and I know our pastors feel it. They could have picked the, the relationship series at any moment in the year, but I believe it is divine right now in this moment. And a calling for our church, I'm telling you, you watch God begin to move. And I'm telling you right now, if you're married, you don't want to miss a week. If you're single, you don't want to miss a week. And I'm going to tell you right now, here's what I've learned about marriage and relationships, is you can't be the wrong one and demand the right one. You got to fix you. You believe in God for a godly man. You believe in God for a godly woman. You don't want to turn the corner and be the wrong one when you meet the right one. So get rid of the brokenness now. Come on, I'm not preaching a relationship series. I'm just trying to tell you, you don't want to miss because the passion in your marriage is going to come back. The passion of believing you is going to come back. Come on, how many are thankful? Are you with me? We're going to remove the ashes. We're going to love God. And we're going to have a passion for God Sunday. Come on. Oh, yeah, y'all getting ready. Team, team can go ahead and come out. Y'all get ready. We're, we're gonna, I'm going to start to wrap this thing up. Whew. Man, I, are y'all ready? We like, it's like fourth quarter, baby. Come on, all right? We ain't done yet, but I need y'all to turn it up a little bit. All right, look at your name and say, let's go. Let's go. Here's the second thing. Here's the second thing God did in that story. He said, get rid of the ashes. You know what you need to get rid of. So just do it. Second thing is, is it, it says, every morning arrange. Every morning arrange. I guarantee if everybody were to pull out their phone right now and show me your calendar, not a single one of you have on your Google calendar meeting with God. And can I tell you, a missed appointment becomes a disappointment. No wonder you're disappointed and you have anxiety and stress. You don't have a daily rhythm with the Lord. If you want to keep the fire in your heart going out, then hey, I know some of you like to sleep in and can't. When I get in a rut, my wife will tell you, like I eat, 
I eat a whole lot of Whataburger and Shipley's. Come on, right? Like, and I, praise God. And, uh, and I, but I also, I, I sleep in and I get into unhealthy rhythm. I've learned that to keep the fire going in my life and in my marriage and my family, like, like, yo, I'm a grown man. Wake up, Brandon. Get up in the morning, spend some time with the Lord, walk around to your children's rooms and pray in the spirit over your children for the day. That no matter what the enemy tries to come at them, the Jesus on the inside of them is going to protect them. Pray Psalms 91. You got to wake up every morning if you want to keep the fire of God in your life. And the last thing is this. I love this part. It says, carry it outside the camp. Carry it outside. We do our best. Our pastor's vision and our team Man, it is our prayer that every Sunday you walk in here and we hope you get filled up and full of light. If you walk in, you need hope, you get hope. If you need joy, you pray, you find joy. But can I tell you right now, like I said, like the goal is to fill you up, stir you up a little bit. But our prayer is that what you experience on the Sunday, you take it home. Take it outside the walls of this church. Take it to your marriage. Take it to your family. This is why you need to be in a connect group, in an HC group. This is why, men, I don't care what your calendar is, you ain't too busy not to be here on Saturday night for men's night because when a room is packed with a group of men that love God and are passionate about God and the group of men, when men lead their household, their family follows. When you can save a soul, you can save a family. Take it outside the camp. Take it to your workplace. Take it to Chick-fil-A. Wherever you go, take the God. Be a representative. Don't just walk in on Sunday. Sundays are for you. But bring this Jesus Sunday to Sunday. Are y'all with me? Because I'm telling you right now, just, just like don't do it often, but skip a Sunday. Drive around the city and tell me if there's still not people that need to be reached. We got more rooms. We got more campuses. We can do more services. We can do whatever it takes. But the best thing you can do is get out and talk about the name of Jesus Monday through Saturday and invite them to the house of God. Come on, are you with me? We're well, going to experience the same Jesus that you have. I felt, led, I felt led with this. I felt led with this right here. Here's my second to last point. It's going to move quick. It's this. I don't know why I felt this in my spirit. To my love and passion, but don't ever apologize for your passion and praise. Don't ever apologize for your passion and praise. It's amazing to me how many believers I meet that stay quiet and silent. You can be an introvert and still show passion. In fact, if you're an introvert, it is stepping out in faith to raise your hands and to lift your voice. But how many know our God deserves our praise, right? Our God deserves our strength. And I know, baby, it's your first time you walking up in here and be like, man, this place is wild. Man, there's a reason why we shout. There's a reason why we praise. But can I tell you right now, hear me, in this world and where our culture is at right now, God is looking, where are the faithful? Where are the ones with boldness? Where are the ones that are going to walk into any room within the city and around the world that when they walk in, they don't fit in, but they stand out and they have a love and they got a passion for God. There's one scripture I want to share with you in Philippians 1.20. Well, I feel like I could preach all day on this scripture right here. I just hope y'all can match, match the shout. Philippians 1.20 in the Passion Translation says this, no matter what, I will continue to hope and passionately cling to Jesus so that he will be openly, check this out, revealed through me before everyone's eyes. Come on. So I will not be ashamed. Come on. In my life or in my death, Christ will be magnified in me. Come on. Do I got any unashamed people in the house? Do I got anybody that's not ashamed about their God? But you're not going to just say, I love God, but I'm going to carry a passion for God from Sunday to Sunday. If you love God, come on, make some praise in the house. Let them know that you love him. Woo! Let me tell you right now, you can take this. Let me tell you right now. Think about this. Stay standing because we ain't done yet. Come on. We on the five-yard line, baby. Don't leave. 
Are y'all with me? I came to stir you up a little bit. Don't ever apologize for your passion or your praise. Don't ever do it. And that's why I tell my kids, like, don't be afraid. Say, hey, if you come to church with me, they get a little wild, they get a little crazy, they lift their hands, they shout, they believe. There's a reason why we have, I don't see nobody apologizing at a Taylor Swift concert. I don't see nobody apologizing at a Beyonce or Morgan Wallace concert. I don't see nobody apologizing, losing their minds and painting their bodies at a Texans game. So let me tell you right now, no matter what room we walk into, we will be unashamed to show our God. We're going to shout. We're going to praise. We're going to love Him. Come on, do I got a church? Every campus, no matter where you are, not only do we love God, but we got a passion for God from Sunday to Sunday. Woo! I tell you, I'm a little fired up, baby. Come on. Here's the last thing. Here's the last thing. Every pastor has three closes my last one. Can you throw up that scripture for me? That very last scripture. Oh no, the last point is this. You got to use what you've got. Use what you've got. Revelations 3, 1 and 2 says this. Wake up! I'm trying to stir you up a little bit, all right? Can we throw it on the screen? Revelations 3. I don't know where it's at. Here we go. It says, wake up! Somebody shout, wake up! That passion right there. Come on. Strengthen what little remains. Strengthen what little remains. I don't know everybody's story, but I do know this. There's something on the inside of you. Whether it's maybe you've given up a God for a long time. Maybe you just stepped back into the church and it's been years. There's something on the inside of you. That's all you need to hold on to. When Paul was shipwrecked, he was trying to get to his destination, and the storm hit. The ship shattered. The Bible says that Paul screamed out and just says, just grab a broken piece. You don't have to be all together. You just got to grab one piece every day. Today, you grab a piece. Monday, you're going to grab a piece. Tuesday, you're going to grab a piece from Sunday. Like, even if you got to get to your destination on broken pieces, find what remains. Because I know this, your story ain't over. And how many know God's not done with you yet? Come on, how many believe that? So I've asked the team. I've asked the team. There's a great song called He Is Able. But there's a tag at the very end of it. And you're going to see the, the lyrics on the screen. I want this, this song right here to resonate. And if it resonates in you, I need you to shout it and I need you to sing it. Can we say right now, starting from today, we're not just going to have a love for God, but we're going to have a passion for God. Are you with me? I'm asking everybody in the room, as the team comes, we're going we're to lean into this moment. Come on, here we go. I've come There's so much goodness and grace, much more than I deserve, cause I know who I am, I can stay where I'm at, we've come this far by faith, and I just can't turn back. He's not done with me yet. He's not done with me yet. There's so much more to the story. You're not done with me yet. You're not done with me yet. I've got something to live for.
I wonder if I got anybody in the room that know that God's not done with you yet. Do I got anybody in the room that has the love and the passion for God? Come on, how many thankful that your best days are ahead of you? And what you feel right now, you're going to bring Sunday to Sunday. Come on, how many know your best days are ahead of you? Your best days are ahead for your marriage. Your best days are ahead for your family. Your best days are ahead for your finances. Come on, one more shot of praise. How many know God's not done with you yet? Come on. One of the greatest way to carry this, not just love and passion, having a reflection of Jesus, the first step is saying yes to Jesus. With every head bowed and every eye closed. It's just something I've said for years, but Jesus didn't die on the cross to be a part of your top three. He died to be number one in your life. If you need that fire in your heart to come back, it starts right now by making a decision to follow Jesus. If you really believe that song, that he ain't done with you yet, you may have left God, but he's never left you. Or maybe you need to rededicate your life. This is your moment. It doesn't matter who's to the right or who's to the left of you. It don't matter what, what they think. You control your eternity in heaven. Every campus. Everywhere, Woodlands, Katie Richmond, watching online on the count of three, if you're saying, I need you, Jesus, I'm going to ask you to throw your hands up as much as you would jump up and down for a touchdown today. Throw your hand up. Make a statement with heaven saying, I need you, Jesus. One, two, three. Come, throw it up. Throw it up. Keep it up. Come on. Throw it up. Keep it up. Just keep it up. I want to see it. So many hands going up. Thank you. Thank you. I see you, Woodlands. Come on. I see you, Katie Richmond. Come on, that's all right. You can shout. Come on, just keep your hand up. I want to see it. The Bible says when one comes to heaven, all of heaven throws a party. Come on, can I get everybody to be thankful for what God has done? Everybody shout this prayer. Say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Today, Jesus, I give you my life. Wash my sins clean. Come into my heart. Help me live for you Sunday to Sunday. And Father, let me just pray for you real quick. God, stretch your hands up to heaven. Come on, everybody. Father, I thank you. Every location, where you at? If you're watching online, just do it in your living room, wherever you're watching. Don't do it in your car, but do it in your living room. Father, I thank you for every person here. As it says, we gotta remove, we gotta remove what remains. I just, I don't know why I feel so heavy. Man, in Jesus' name, anxiety is no longer a part of your life. Depression is no longer, whatever is robbing your passion for the Lord. In Jesus' name, addiction is gone. Healing begins to fill your heart and your soul. I pray right now, here's what I feel in my spirit. I pray, there's a spirit of boldness about to unlock in some of you. Because there's certain rooms you've been ashamed to talk about the gospel of Jesus. And you're going to step into your rooms this week, whatever room that is, and you're not going to be ashamed to talk about the name of Jesus. People know you love God, but they're about to see your passion and your love for God. And Father, I just declared in Jesus' name, I thank you for this house. I thank you for the new property. We're about to break ground that even greater things are ahead, Father. I thank you that this house reflects the name of Jesus, and we will be known as a church that every person, every marriage, and every family loves Jesus from Sunday to Sunday. Sunday. And if you believe in Home City, every location, somebody shout amen and give God some crazy praise.